<laughs> All right, so if you're looking, guys, at the slope field questions, it says to match them with their equations. So to match these slope fields with their equations, like letter C, for example, that one's really easy for me to see what slope field that goes to. Because letter C, if you pick a point, hence the blue point they gave you, and you just sort of follow along with that, you can see that letter C is a quadratic. So the derivative of a quadratic is going to be linear. So when you match it in 35, you're looking for a linear. Which means that 35 would match to letter C. And then letter F at the top, that's exactly like the demo answer I gave you. So letter F, you can see is circular. So if you think about the derivative of a circle, it's always going to be your um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So when you move it over, you're going to have a negative x divided by y. So f goes to 40. And then what you could do if you're really struggling to match them is plug in a value. So if you plugged in dy dx equals y. So if you pick the point for y, this means the only values that are changing are changing on the y's. So the x's have to always be the same. So letter thir or number 36 goes to letter e because the x slopes are always going to be the same. And then 37, and again, you could always work this backwards as well. Think about the fact that you could use our technique we learned the other day. So, here's paper. This is dy dx equals x minus y, you could add y to the other side and multiply both sides by dx. And then take your antiderivative, etc. So, but honestly, the easiest thing to do is, so you can see they almost picked points in blue. Pick a point on the graph and find its slope and find its slope to match your equation. So here, if x minus y has to equal the slope, if dy dx equals x minus y and you make your slope zero, that means your x and y's had to be the same. So you want to find a point where x equals y to be the same. So everywhere x has to equal y for 37. So what that means is that if you pick x to be 1, then y has to be 1, and your slope would equal 0. So if you go to your graphs, you want to go to 1, 1. So like here's kind of 1, 1, slope's not 0. 1, 1, 
slope's not zero, and so on and so forth. Does that kind of help for helping find your slope field equations? So like again, you even would know something like 39 and 40. At these, when x is zero, you would need to have a vertical asymptote when x is zero because you would have a number divided by zero when x is zero. So anywhere x is zero, you need to have an asymptote. So like 39 is gonna go to letter B because at zero, you have vertical asymptotes. And conversely, you could do the same. So like here where you have your asymptote here where you can see like the slopes are identical. That's going to go match your 37 to my D, etc. So like you can see D, you can't see actually, D and A are totally flips of each other. So D and A are going to match to 37 and 38 because they're just going to be the flip of that equation. So you can see how 37 and 38 equations are flipped. How are we with sketching slope fields? Like what you had to do for 29, 31, and 33. With confident sketching slope fields. Okay. But I, can you do 31? Do you want to see 31? Do you want to see it drawn from the beginning or see it like the answer? Okay. So dy dx equals 2x plus y to draw or sketch a slope field. You're going to make a slope field table. So you have x plus y as the left side of the slope field because now our table is coordinate points and dy dx is like the right side of our table. So to get your slope field values, you could start anywhere on that slope field. So the furthest point in each corner is this point right here at negative 1, negative 1. And then to draw in the slope field, you'd plug negative 1, negative 1 in to dy dx. So you'd have 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So that means I need to draw a line with a slope of negative 3. If you picked negative 1 comma 0, that's that point right here. So that would be a slope of negative 2. So this line is a little less steep than the slope you just drew in, but still negative and down. You could pick negative 1, positive 1. So now you have negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So again, a little less steep and still down. At negative 1, 2, you'd get negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. So it flatlines. And then you could continue that process, but now doing the next row. So it would be like negative 1, 0. Or, sorry, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2. So that zeroes out all of your x's, and then that just leaves you with the y's. 
So that's like negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for all of your slopes. So this slope is negative 1 here. So I'm going to kind of try to mock that slope of negative 1 down here. Zero is a flat line. Positive one should be almost directly the opposite. And then slope for two should be steeper. And then you do it again with one negative one, one zero, one one, one two. So one negative one is 2 minus 1, which is 1. 1, 0 is 2. 1, 1 is 3. And 1, 2 would be 4. So these are now all positive slopes. and they get steeper as you go. Your assessment on Monday is going to be mostly multiple choice on the front and then a couple um, for your response. And again, the idea is that I just want to make sure we have an understanding of slope fields. So, can you take that dy dx table and make that value? So that's almost what I was trying to suggest, and I wish I almost did 31 before the 35 to 37, because I was trying to suggest picking points to find a slope that matches them. So if you picked a point on each graph and you found its value, then you could eliminate ones it matches to. So if I gave you like three slope fields and I gave you an equation, you would want to then just find the point that matches that slope field's equation by plugging in x, y coordinates and getting slopes. So any other questions from that assignment that you have or any other assignments we've had I've gone over most of them I think at this point but not always with everybody in my room and if not we can just pick up with the review and go over questions from that Then go ahead and take out your 6162 review, read through question one on that handout. So the antiderivative of 2y is 2y squared over 2. The antiderivative of 3x squared is 3x cubed over 3 plus x plus c. Your 2's cancel, your 3's cancel. Now, if I want to find C at this point, I can. I don't have to solve for Y. I can actually plug in my initial conditions now, which is negative 4 squared, 1 cubed, plus 1, 
plus C and get that 14 is equal to C and now I can take my y squared equals x cubed plus x plus 14. Solve for y by square rooting both sides. Remember that when you square root both sides, it gets a plus or a minus. Now, we wanted to match our initial condition. So the only way for it to match my initial condition and to get a negative answer is to pick the negative square root only. So my final answer is y equals the negative square root of x cubed plus x plus 14. Because the positive square root would not give you that negative 4, which would therefore not be in my solution region. Number two. The function f is differentiable for all real numbers. The point three one fourth is on the graph of y equals f of x. And the slope at each point on the graph is given by the following equation. So again, that three one fourth is my initial condition. The dy dx represents your slope. If they ask you to find y, they're asking you to find the original function that meets those initial conditions and slope derivative. So you're going to separate your variables. So divide by y squared, multiply by dx, integrate both sides, so y squared is really like y to the negative 2. So that's really like y to the negative 1 times negative 1. At this point, I would find my c value and then clean up after. So my y value is 1 fourth, so you have negative 1 over 1 fourth equals 6 times 3 plus 3 squared plus c. Well, negative 1 over 1 fourth is really like negative 4. Yes. Thank you. So 18 minus 9 is 9, and then you have negative 4, so you subtract your 9 over, and you get C is uh, negative 13. At this point, you could go take that and plug it back in. 
So it's negative 1 over y equals 6x minus x squared minus 13. And because the y's in the bottom and the x are on top, you can kind of think of this like a cross multiplying in a way. So to get y up top, you're almost going to flip flop their positions. Is that my air conditioner or the wind? Oh yeah, ew, it looks like it's going to torrential downpour. Yeah. I mean, Zach can attest. Sometimes my air conditioner makes some funky noises. <laughs> All right, is everybody okay with how the Y and the X is sort of flip-flop positions? So what I have is I actually printed out the um, answer guides to the next parts of the packet and I was going to, you know, go through like a couple problems with you, but then also give you guys time to just work on them and ask me questions so that anything you're confused with, you can ask me individually, you can ask me as like a group, I can record it and post it. But um, let's go through and do like kind of one of each from those. And then we will also uh, open up a door to asking any sort of questions you might have from that. So in that first example, what type of problem or what concept would you think of when you see a 20x cubed, 5x4 plus 3 to the fourth? So anytime I kind of imagine C create in my head the idea that this is a chain rule, I'm thinking U sub, because I have something inside raised to a power. So if you have something inside raised to a power, and we still have stuff outside, nobody wants to FOIL four times. You could, and then just use reverse power rule, but we have that new rule called U sub, so we're going to say 5x4 plus 3 is equal to u. So du is equal to 20x cubed dx. So you can replace the 20x cubed dx. You can replace the 5x to the 4th plus 3 with u. And we get the integral of u to the 4 du. That one's so nice, I didn't even have to divide or move or manipulate my constants. So power rule in reverse says you add 1, divide by your new exponent, and tack on a plus c. So I have 5x to the 4th plus 3 to the 5th all over 5 plus c. Yeah, they're flickering. Surprise. Surprise we still internet. 
but it is really delayed because the lag to what you're seeing me write and what I'm actually writing is horrendous. All right. In your packet, number 20, negative 1 over cosecant x dx. What could I do to help solve this problem? I don't have an antiderivative for a cosecant in my denominator. Yeah, exactly. So, like, if it's 1 over cosecant, that's really just what? Well, if you don't know it the easy way, you could say it's 1 over, because cosecant's really 1 over sine. So, it's really negative 1 over 1 over sine. And what happens when you have a fraction in your denominator? Yep, you flip it, so it's going to come up to my numerator as negative sine x dx and the antiderivative of negative sine x dx is perfect cosine x plus z boom there went the internet <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I think the light bulb burnt out on my projector. But there's no, like, that's what I'm saying. I think the ball burnt out. So, like, the promethean board's off, but the top corner is off. Yeah, but I'm not using the promethean. The promethean's actually unplugged. I'm literally, the promethean, like, you know, like how people have movie theater screens on their basement? The promethean is actually just acting like that type of screen. The reason I think the ball burnt out is because that was screen mirroring my iPad and my iPad's still screen mirroring. Tim, turn around. Is that bulb on? No. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm like 95% certain my bulb just burnt out. Um, you mean a sign you just have to do your packet on your own? Like. Your quiz is wrote. Monday is done. I'm not changing it. Okay, so how many of you have iPhones? You're a liar. I was going to show you you can watch the video while like I'm teaching it back here. Yeah. Because I don't have, like, a good alternative. So if you go to, like, Teams, the Zoom tab is always on there. Because I only have, like, four more examples I want to do with you, and then you'll be able to leave the Zoom. I was like, Brooke Bell wants to enter my waiting, or is in my waiting room. Totally welcome to work on the packets, and I'll pass out all the answer keys. So if you turn to, like, 22, now that I made all your phones join, you would equal x cubed minus 4. They tell you that. So you have to find your du, which would be 3x squared dx. So then, in that case, you have to almost pull out the 3 and the 15 so that you have the x squared dx matching for du, and you get e to the u du, and you can simplify 15 divided by 3. So you'd have 5, the integral of e to the u du, which is 5e to the u plus c, and then you just replace your u with x cubed minus 4 to get your final answer.
So your initial conditions, like what we did at the beginning, will have U substitution, but it's also going to mix in some non-U subs. So like not every problem is going to need U substitution. And then we'll have a couple like the next packet that says separable, where you might have like dy dx equals e to the x minus y. And you have to get the dy's on the left and the ex, dx's on the right. So you need to recall that any exponent like that is really the same as multiplying on bottom. Well, yeah. And then because it's a negative exponent, that's really like dy dx equals e to the x over e to the y. Because if you think about your like base rule, it's that you subtract the top exponent minus the bottom, which is how we get to that. Then you would cross multiply. So you had e to the y dy equals e to the x dx. And then you just integrate both sides. And the antiderivative of e to the y is e to the y. Antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. And then to get y alone, you have to ln both sides. So you'd get y equals the natural log of e to the x plus c. So there will be some like that where you have to move and separate the dy dx's. You'll have some like what we did before where you have an initial condition where you have to separate the ey and the x and y. And then you'll have a couple multiple choice with slope fields and some u sub with uh, endpoints and without endpoints. So do we need to see like a definite integral with endpoints and changing our bounds? Or we have, yeah, you want to see an endpoint changing bound? So in your packets, that would be like on page four and we'll just do number 25. So once they give you your U, you can use that to find your change of bounds. So you could find U of 1 and U of 0. So my new bounds would be 5 and 1. My du is 8x dx, and you'll notice that it's missing the negative. So you can just pull that negative out in front. So you'd have negative the integral, new bounds, 1 to 5, 1 over u squared du. And actually, this problem asked you to express it in terms of new bounds and not evaluate. And I can't recall if on your multiple choice or if it was on a different one. I actually think there was a multiple choice question yesterday on your mock where you um, were given a question and you had to find its replacement and it involved changing the bounds. So, well, this one says to express it in terms of u, so then you don't have to. And if you change your bounds, you don't put x's back. So if I were to finish this problem out, that's kind of like saying u to the negative 2. So my antiderivative would be negative 1 over u. And I would now just leave it as 5 and 1. 
So you'd have 1 over u evaluated from 5 to 1. And that would be like 1 fifth minus 1. So you'd have negative 4 fifths. So let me pass out answer keys to you. There's not work on them. It is just your final answers. And then if you're working through problems in the next like 40, sorry, I lost 40, the next 40 minutes, being that this projector is out, I will keep problems on the whiteboard for you and then kind of take pictures and record it that way for notes. For no you can save a picture of all your phone batteries and end up doing it. You can plug it in. Like, I don't know. You're welcome.